good evening, everyone. Welcome. I'm Tom Stone. I'm going to present this short webinar about making the unconscious conscious, how to do that. And so I've prepared a simple little PowerPoint with some text and graphics that I'm going to use, and I can share the screen, which I'm going to do. So I'll do that and we'll get started. Okay, so this is how to make the unconscious conscious and a warm welcome to everyone. I'm gonna talk about showing people who are enslaved by their ego, new techniques that make the unconscious conscious, which transforms illusions into the continuous experience of wholeness. So the problem is, <clears throat> that we can't do this with our mind. We can't figure it out with our intellect. And <clears throat> the problem is that the ego hides within itself. I've got a little two minute video. You may have seen it on the web page, but I'm gonna play it anyway in case anybody missed it. This is a video of the experts talking about this insidious nature of the ego. Here it is, just a couple of minutes. The ego is the worst confidence trickster we could ever figure, we could ever imagine, because you don't see it. And the single biggest con is, I am you. The problem is that the ego hides in the last place that you'd ever look within itself. It disguises its thoughts as your thoughts, its feelings as your feelings. It, you, you think it's you. People's need to protect their own egos knows no bounds. They will lie, cheat, steal, kill, do whatever it takes to maintain what we call ego boundaries. People have no clue that they're in prison. They don't know that there is an ego. They don't know the distinction. At first it's difficult for the mind to accept that there's some something beyond itself, that there's something uh, of, of greater value and greater capacity for discerning truth than itself. In religion, the ego manifests as the devil. And of course, no one realizes how smart the ego is because it created the devil so you could blame someone else. In creating uh, this imaginary external enemy, we usually, usually made a, a real enemy for ourselves, and that becomes a real danger to the ego, but that's for the ego's creation. There is no such thing as an external enemy, no matter what that voice in your head is telling you. All perception of an enemy is a projection of the ego as the enemy. In that sense, you could say that 100% of our external enemies are borrowing creation. Your greatest enemy is your own inner perception, is your own ignorance, is your own ego. So it's very interesting that these experts know how insidious the ego is, how it's very difficult for people to even recognize that they have it, but they don't offer anything for becoming more conscious of it. There is a new unique way to come out of this kind of illusion and that's what I'm going to be showing you a little bit about tonight, explaining how it works. And uh, then I'll tell you about how to actually really learn all the details. It's a way of consistently knowing something with your body's experiential wisdom rather than with your mind. Both thinking and knowing come to us as thoughts. And this is problematic because people don't sense the difference between a thinking thought and a knowing thought. But there is a way to tell the difference, and here it is. There are four different kinds of thoughts that influence our decisions. Two of them are useful, and two of them are not useful. The two that are useful are practical thoughts, which are thoughts like you know, making a shopping list or uh, getting directions to go somewhere, um, all kinds of tons of practical thoughts we have, and we need those. Those are positive, very useful. And the intuitive thoughts are the ones that come to us. We don't create them, we just perceive them. It's sort of like 
sensing something that's coming. I like to call it remembering the future. In fact, the quantum physicists say that the mathematics of the past and the future are identical. How come we can only remember the past? Well, they're very good at the math, but they don't necessarily understand human conditioning that well. People very much have a tendency to ignore or negate their intuitive thoughts. Um, sometimes it gets kind of beat out of us when we're little, we have some intuitive thought, we tell our parents, and they don't do that, and they you know, punish us or something like that. And I'm sure you've had the experience, uh, you can let me know if you have, of having an intuition and then not following it, and later finding out your intuition was absolutely right on, and you could just kick yourself for not following it. You guys, any of you had that? Can you turn on your audio for a second? Yes, yes, many, many yeah. times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. And then I, this is extremely common. When I ask this question at my lectures and workshops and stuff, virtually everybody raises their hands, very common. So these are the two kinds of thoughts that are useful. And what we want to be able to do is to be able to follow our intuition much better. So the not useful thoughts are also two categories. They're the ego-based thoughts and emotional pain-based thoughts. Now this is very consistent with those of you who are familiar with Eckhart Tolle's uh, works like The New Earth and The Power of, Power of Now. Um, he says there are two things you have to get rid of in order to experience spiritual enlightenment or experience pure awareness all the time. And that is you have to get rid of your ego and your what he calls your pain body, which is essentially the, all the stored emotional pain from emotionally painful experiences that were just too much to handle when they happened. And so you've sort of archived them or stored them inside. And the ego-based thoughts, these are the tricky ones that the guys in the video were just talking about. Most people don't even realize when they're having an ego-based thought, it's any thought that has to do with, you know, I want it to be my way, or this is my judgment or my opinion or whatever, anything like that. These are all ego-based thoughts. So I'm gonna explain more about them and the nature and structure of these two different kinds of thoughts uh, momentarily. So the mind can't tell them apart, but the body can. So our body gives us things through direct experience. So for example, if you had never tasted a strawberry, and someone tried to describe the taste of a strawberry to you. They could talk all day and you'd never know what a strawberry tastes like until you actually take a bite. Once you take a bite and you have the direct experience, then you, are, then you know what a strawberry tastes like. So the body provides us with direct knowledge of things through direct experience. So the mind is intellectual and the mind does things like categorize, measure, you know, um, compare, uh, put, put quantities on things, stuff like that. So the body experiential knowing is quite natural. It's very quiet, it's just effortless. And the mind, the intellectual aspect of the mind of all this sort of calculating and has a kind of subtle forcing or unnaturalness to it. Now, it's a subtle feeling that isn't obvious to you. And Although all thoughts are patterns of vibrating awareness, you've been having all four kinds of thoughts all through your life, and so they all seem natural to you. And so most people don't make any distinction between these four types of thoughts. But this is very important, because if you base your actions on your ego or emotionally pain-based thoughts, this is typically gonna lead to something not working and you know ends in a disaster or you know, at least uh, making you angry or disappointed or upset that things didn't go the way you wanted. Whereas when things are based on intuitive thoughts, when you make your decision based on intuitive thoughts, then you have a tendency to be very successful. And in fact, the people who are really successful people in the world, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Oprah Winfrey, Albert Einstein, if you look it up on, online, you'll find all these people have 
incredible quotes about the importance of trusting and following your intuition. And you can talk if you have a question when you go along, just unmute yourself and ask me, no problem. So how about some kind of solution to this problem? Is, is there even one? And the good news is there is. And it's called intuition testing. It's also called muscle testing. Some of you may be familiar with the term muscle testing or even the technique. And it has to be learned properly. There are many people who teach it, but very often it's taught more on a sort of level of being a parlor game or something like it's not taught particularly thoroughly or well. So that people don't find it reliable. They say it doesn't work and then they don't use it. So proper training is essential. I've been training people in how to do muscle testing for about 25 years. I've trained thousands of people and I've gone very deeply into what it takes to really get it, the training in such a way that it's actually very, very reliable. And so I have tons of people who use it reliably and it's working great. So it's quite an amazingly useful tool. And this finally provides us a way to make the unconscious conscious. So it's possible to know which kind of thought you're having. And when you do it this way, then it makes it much, much easier to decide which of your thoughts is appropriate to follow. So the good thing is it gets even better than this. Now, if you only had the ability to distinguish which thoughts are intuitive and practical versus which thoughts are ego-based and emotionally pain-based, it would still be good. You'd still have some basis for being able to more clearly make a decision. But as I mentioned, it gets even better. We have something I'm very, very fortunate to discover and develop something called the pure awareness techniques. And there are actually eight pure awareness techniques, quietness, wholeness, neutrality, out, clarity, wisdom, locate, and in. And when you first learn these, the most important ones to learn first are the quietness technique, the locate technique, the in technique, and the out technique. So I'm going to explain a little bit about those. The other ones are kind of okay to come later, but these four are very valuable and important for um, when you're first starting. Here's a chart that shows the energy structures of the types of emotions. So there are basically two major categories of emotions, emotions that are useful and emotions that are not useful. And on the useful side, you can see in the upper left, the useful emotions are energizing and empowering, things like love, compassion, happiness, joy, gratitude, the list goes on and on. But even fear can be useful. You know, if you're about to cross the street and some new electric car is coming that you can't even hear and you just see it at the very last moment, you know, you're gonna jump back and you know that this is actually very, very useful fear. There are you know, many, many instances where there's something truly to fear and then the emotion of the fear actually helps us to you know, not get injured or, or harmed or something. But the vast majority of emotions that people have are in the not useful category. So that's what takes up most of the, of the uh, slide here. And these emotions are disruptive and depleting. And they're, again, in two categories. One category is called the painful internal ones. These are the emotional pain. These are at the source of the emotional pain-based thoughts. These are traumas, emotional pain, heartbreak, resentment, grief, and on and on. It goes on and on. There are many of those kinds. And for these, we use one technique called the in technique. And you can see in the little image of the person, there's a kind of red dot right around the solar plexus. And this is because the in technique energies have a structure to them that is kind of localized and internal. And so it feels like a tight knot or ball of energy inside. And uh, this is what we use the in technique for. I'll be saying a little more about that in a bit. Then to the right of that, we have this whole category called reactive or external uh, emotional structures. And these, again, have two subcategories, upset and fear. And in the upset portion, this is when you're projecting the possibility of some positive outcome onto the future, basically creating what we call an expectation. So if you want things to go a certain way and they don't, 
what normally happens? Well, you get upset in some form. You get angry or disappointed, frustrated, sad, depressed, or something like that. The other subcategory is fear. And in the fear category, you're projecting possible negative outcomes onto the future. So they're both about projecting onto the future, either positive or negative outcomes. And for the negative outcomes, what you do is you create worry, fear, anxiety, when it gets really bad, panic attacks, or even worse, the hypervigilance is like really severe um, anxiety. And as you can see to the right of that, there's a kind of cloud or aura of energy to this kind of emotional energy. It radiates out from the body fills up the space around us. And the problem is we're inside the cloud and we're sort of seeing the world through it. So it really colors all our perception. It's kind of like having dark glasses on in a way, emotional dark glasses. And so, you know, someone does something that hurts your feelings and you're angry, you're upset. And then a little later, a friend of yours comes along and says, oh, hi, Tom, how are you doing? And you turn to him and say, don't talk to me because you're so angry just from your reaction that you're angry at everything. You know, it kind of makes you a little bit indiscriminate sometimes. So these are the two basic structures of the two categories of unresolved, not useful emotions. The in-technique ones are internal and painful. The external ones are kind of this outer cloud. And we use the out technique for resolving those. So the other thing that's important to learn is what's called the Freedom Practice Program. And this uses the combination of the intuition testing, muscle testing, and these four pure awareness techniques that I mentioned in combination. And I'm gonna to explain to you a little bit how that works. We start by doing something called a decision influences assessment. And this uses the muscle testing to test to see to what extent your ego-based thoughts and your emotional pain-based thoughts, your intuitive thoughts and your practical thoughts, to what extent is each of these types of thoughts influencing your decisions? And I've done this now for uh, quite a lot of people. I currently have a program with about mm, 35, 40 people in it that are taking a training to become presenters of my work. They're going to become certified, uh, uh, certified presenters of what's called Inner Greatness Optimizing, which is the name of my system, current name. I used to call it Human Software Engineering, debugging and upgrading our inner human software, which is also a good language and still use that sometimes. But now we talk about the result, which is to optimize your access and expression of your inner greatness. So this decision influences assessment gives us a kind of baseline. We can kind of see where you're at. It's amazing, I've done so many of these. It's very, very common for people's score of how much the ego-based thoughts are influencing their decisions. Sometimes it's very, very high. So uh, this is the one element of it. The next element is called the daily freedom practice. So the way it works is you get up in the morning and you take maybe 20 minutes you go deep into the silence of pure awareness using the quietness technique, which is a very, very simple form of kind of guided meditation. You go deep into the quietness, it's extremely simple. It's the e simplest and easiest way to experience pure awareness that I know of. And so you go into the quietness and then you just start having thoughts. It's just natural to have thoughts come. But then you start to use the intuition testing, the muscle testing, to determine which of the four categories of thoughts a particular thought is in. And if it's in the ego-based thoughts category, you immediately use the locate technique and you, the locate technique is for allowing you to find and allow yourself to access the energy field of the emotion. So if it's ego-based, you'll use the locate technique and you'll find one of these clouds of energy that's surrounding and engulfing you. If it's an emotional pain-based thought, then you're gonna use the locate technique and you'll be able to find that knot or ball, tight, unresolved ball of emotional pain still inside of you. And so that's, <clears throat> when you find it, then you use the in or the out technique to resolve it immediately. And then when it's gone, you go back to noticing your thoughts again. When you, 
in muscle test each, pardon me, in muscle test each thought. And again, when you find either ego-based or emotionally pain-based thought, you immediately use locate to find the energy and then in or out to resolve it, depending on which kind it is. So then we also do something each day called a freedom practice report. And what this is, is you just post to the WeChat group of the program that you're in a brief explanation of what happened in your freedom practice that particular day. This is the first phase of the freedom practice. And then um, I review all of those reports. It's just a few sentences. You know, I had this kind of thought come up. It was uh, ego-based. I did the out technique and the energy's gone, resolved, and I'm feeling lighter and better. Just like a few sentences, that's all that's needed. So it only takes a moment to uh, prepare that, unless you have a whole bunch to report, then maybe it takes a few moments. But in any case, the doing the freedom practice report is good because you know you're going to be doing that, so then you do the freedom practice to make sure that you've got something to report on. And what I'm finding is that when people do this daily, their progress is just absolutely extraordinary in moving very rapidly towards living in pure awareness all the time. So I do the Freedom Practice Report reviews, and this gives me a chance to mentor everybody uh, briefly on a daily basis. So if I see something in their report where, you know, they're either asking a question or you're, you know, having some experience that you're having some difficulty with doing the techniques or you're having some, uh, possibly you may be having some uh, uh, ego-based thought that you're not recognizing, then this gives me an opportunity to point out and say, oh, take a look at this. I think you have some ego-based thought. Please check it. So this is the basic structure of this Freedom Practice Program, and you do it on an ongoing daily basis. And you know, inner greatness optimizing, we have a sort of standard protocol. People can do sessions on themselves and things like that. People have been using this for years and it's amazing how it's been a very rapid system of removing the illusions created by the ego and starting to be able to live in pure awareness all the time. But I've just started doing this freedom practice program um, around the beginning of this year uh, actually a little later than that, in, I think it was in February. It's been about three months that the people in this presenter training program have been doing this. And it's totally amazed me because I'm seeing results in these people's lives from their, what they're reporting in two months. What it usually takes like about two years to get with just doing integrativeness optimizing in the traditional ordinary way with doing sessions on yourself. So this is a, this is a really major breakthrough for IGO, for integrativeness optimizing, and I'm very, very pleased about it. And it's actually led me to begin this process of connecting with uh, people who are interested in making fewer mistakes, in being less victimized by their emotions, in being less enslaved by their ego and not even realizing that that's happening, but knowing they need something. So I'm very, very delighted and excited about this program. It seems to be the fastest way I know of to be able to start to unmask this illusory nature of the ego, make the unconsciousness of its influences conscious through using the intuition testing, muscle testing, and then be able to resolve the energy of the emotional basis of the ego and emotionally pain-based thoughts very quickly and thoroughly. And when they're gone, when you resolve it that way, when they're gone, they're really gone, like, and don't come back. So I think if there are no further questions, that we'll go ahead and end the call. Thank you so much for joining me, and uh, uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again in the future. All the best wishes to everyone.